both Colin and Vessel, um, in terms of giving this presentation, were really just to give an update of what's going on. And in the Stellenbosch area, we had three layers of contractors all along the front row, um, actually um, sitting, listening, bated breath to this particular presentation. We don't have any contractors now because we're now on record as uh, going and telling everyone what's going on. But uh, for those of you who are not aware of what's going on with the funding and what's going on with all the, the monies for working for water, uh, there have been quite a few significant issues here. Um, the particular presentation I'm giving is basically the Western Cape working for water. Uh, it is an 80 million rand project, um, and in actual fact, they have lots of subcontractors and lots of workers. So as you can see here, in terms of introduction, um, I'll tell you who the uh, service providers uh, for uh, national resource management programs in the Western Cape are. Uh, the successful proposals um, for the Western Cape 2018 to 2021. Um, who's in for the next bid? Um, when I showed you a program much earlier this morning, I showed you that basically the country has 1.2 billion that goes out to service providers for implementing agents across the country uh, on a three-year on a three-year cycle. So uh, basically, they say this is what we need done. Who would like to apply for it? And uh, we'll give you a three-year contract to do these things. Um, and then uh, what's happening on the herb herbicide assistance, I will explain, and uh, future working for water projects. Um, uh, Colin and... Vessel are part of the environmental programs, Chief uh, Directorate, Natural Resources uh, Management Program, Working for Water. Uh, Mornay and I have been consultants to the Working for Water program for the best part of 20 years. So we really are, feel that we are very close to them. We don't represent them, but we've been appendages to this particular department for the best part of 20 years. Uh, and we're very proud of the work that they have done uh, against all odds, I can assure you. Um, they are implementing agents basically for the NIMBA Act, um, and they manage invasive alien species across the country. Uh, a lot of other countries uh, ch have chosen to, particularly Australia and New Zealand, they've chosen to put all their money into border control. Um, Australians are absolutely mindlessly, uh, you know, hysterical about uh, what comes into the country, trying to stop it at the borders. Uh, in this country, the policy was entirely different. Uh, we chose to use it as a, almost like a, Ro a Roosevelt New Deal operation, where it became a, a poverty relief program, uh, and the whole uh, program was based inside the country. And our um, uh, borders only really started getting looked after uh, four or five years ago. Uh, I personally had uh, 20 uh, uh, green, green workers in my office, which I trained as um, biosecurity officials for OR Tambo International Airport. And, and that's been a very recent operation. Most of our stuff is within the country. Um, also, uh, we have scientists at 14 Lewis Street, and they spend their lives. They are not guys that particularly want to come out, but they are very knowledgeable. They've been there for a long time. And they work out where the water stressed uh, catchments are. They work out where, in actual fact, the priorities should be as to what invasives should be moved when. Uh, and, and, and a lot of the proposals that come in from municipalities and and, and, and people, um, uh, groups, they don't like dealing with individuals, and I often have to explain to landowners that if you want to apply for money from working for water or you want to apply for assistance, you must get yourself into some sort of group. They don't like the Mr. Jones would like two million to sort out X, Y, Z. Uh, but if you're suddenly a WWF or you're suddenly the conservancy for something, 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 then they will be very interested in talking to you. I think I'm ad-libbing. This is not quietly along the line. I don't recall them saying that. Um, in terms of the appointment of service providers, um, they go in three-year cycles. So every three years they ask you, and it's um, – document like this and it's just a nightmare and the one three years ago was a nightmare the one one year ago was nightmare times 10 I can assure you of that anyway it is obviously the official document it comes out there are various categories they say we would like to clear these 10 species we would like to clear these particular areas these areas we think are a problem what would you like to do and then all these people um, uh, put in uh, there was a problem in the last one the problem in the last one was that the the tender was issued on the 1st of December, and you had to have it in by the 
basically the you know 14th of January, and and that caused all sorts of problems on a real sort of level that. Nobody wanted to work over December to put all these contracts in. So the levels of contractors went down from, you know, 800 to about 400. Um, and, and that's an issue that they have to face now. And when we were in Stellenbosch, obviously the Stellenbosch people said, well, you know, where's our, you know, where's our money going to be for the next three years? This nature reserve, this nature reserve is appalling. And as we will show you uh, as we go along, um, Stellenbosch didn't get a, a, their contract in, uh, their, their tender in last year. So sorry for Stellenbosch. We had to explain to the Stellenbosch residents that actually no, uh, you know, if, if there's not going to be no work over December, then, you know, you're going to get no money for the next three years from the national body. I'm sure that's off the record as well, and I'm sure I'm not supposed to be saying that. Um, I think I might be a bit more exciting than they would have delivered the, 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 the presentation. Um, but basically, the aim is that the money goes into alien invasive plants, removal, um, monitoring and, 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 and the use of, of water-wise uh, uh, natural reserves. Um, and the applicants have to say what their pl control plans are. And, and this is where Steon goes on and on and on and on. Uh, we actually do uh, uh, training on control plans. We haven't done it for a while, but we probably will be doing it in the second half of this year. How to put a control plan together. City of Cape Town are experts in this. Chandra Roda uh, comes from a long history of having to put all the control plans together herself. She knows what a monumental job it is. But a control plan basically goes into an area, you have to identify all the invasives in the area, you then have to say how long it'll take to actually remove them and how you're going to do it. And there is a, a guidelines, which is on invasives.org.za. There is a guidelines for a control plan. And working for water will not give you money unless you have a control plan. They want to see how you're going to do it, what you're going to do with it, and, and where's all their money going. And the red tape has become formidable. So that control plan is non-negotiable. In terms of the budget allocation, uh, Colin and Vessel oversee 80 million rand uh, across a whole bunch of people. And uh, if you are, uh, your contracts are successful, so this uh, 2018 to 2021, um, there were a whole bunch of contracts and, and they are pretty much come to an end. Uh, these were the Western Cape uh, 21 implementing agents which were allocated uh, during the period 2018 to 2021. Uh, you can see the city of Cape Town, top of the list. Um, they put in for a great deal of, of, of uh, uh, material. And they also are the, this afternoon, we will hear what they are doing with that money. City of Cape Town uh, supplement with a bit of money themselves, but actually a large proportion of the money for the house crows, for the mallards, um, you know, for the, uh, and hopefully we're going to get more money for shot hole borer in Cape Town, uh, Pomudzo, who's the top uh, uh, expert in shot hole borer for the Western Cape, uh, he will be able to tell you this afternoon what he's doing um, in, the, in the Cape Town area. But you can see there, Stellenbosch Municipality was in there. Um, I'm not entirely sure who the CBRW water, but it's a water using agency. Any of my colleagues tell me what that one is? CBR? Uh, WUA, it's a Water Users Association somewhere. Probably Cedarburg, maybe Clan William. Central. Breda, there you go, guys. Okay, there's some very efficient uh, agriculture guys up that way. So I can imagine they're doing a very good job there. Um, NCC, Cape West, Citrus Dahl, um, Van Dijk's, uh, Dorp. Uh, and these were the guys who actually are implementing in the Western Cape area. Uh, then... Hello, hello, hello. January 21 arrived and things changed really differently. New minister, new ideas, major new ideas. We're going to pay differently. After 20 years of sort of quite a socialist idea that uh, small teams needed a bit of capital up front to get the bucky, get the tools, get the everything. So you would have a drawdown. You'd take some money, you'd sort out your teams, and then basically um, you would pay, you would get a little bit less along the way, but you had a bulk amount of money uh, to, to buy your bucky and to get yourself going. Well, that was swept away in, in grand style um, with a lot of people complaining. I'm off, I'm off script again, by the way. Um, uh, but the point was, they said that we're going to have a new system now. And the new system is, wait for it. You do work, and then we pay you. 
So you've got to admit that for the people who came in and created the new system, um, it is quite a sort of a logical thing that you do a month's worth of work and then you get paid at the end of the month. And that's the new system. The new system is there's no drawdowns, there's no money up front, there's no helping on a socialist level. There were too many abuses in the system and um, our new minister is particularly good at uh, financial issues, so she changed the whole system. And there was quite a bit of time issues uh, until that new system um, came into gear and obviously as a result in the Stellenbosch uh, um, forum that we had, uh, we had a lot of contractors saying, you know, that played havoc with their with their cash flow because they were used to getting the money before they did the work. And you know, this is outrageous. Now they've got to do the work before they get the money. That's off script, by the way. So, um, what have we got? for the Western Cape. So in 2021, over the December period, when everyone was on holiday, Stellenbosch Municipality fell off the, out of the list. And these are the people who are, um, no, those are the people who actually are on the list now. So you can see for the Western Cape, there was a crash, an absolute crash, in, in who applied for money and who, who got it. And these are the current service providers uh, for the Western Cape. Um, and this is just the list that was provided in Stellenbosch, and there we, we got it. So... Um, uh, those are the guys who were able to work over the December period, um, and uh, sorry for the others. Um, this is basically a map of the um, Western Cape, where in actual fact the uh, uh, working for water is the pink, and this is where the pink areas, uh, where they very much are working, uh, and if you go in a bit closer, um, that's a sort of it's got a bit of a, a, a wish-wash map, but it basically shows you the areas that they're working uh, and the areas where they have proposed work for the next area. Now, the problem we have here immediately is uh, for our Stellenbosch colleagues, there is nothing in the Stellenbosch area. And we obviously came under huge fire when we went to Stellenbosch because they want to know what's happening with their municipal nature reserves and obviously there's going to be nobody there in the next three years. So this three-year deadline for putting in contracts for, for, for areas is, is, is so critical, I can't tell you. You cancel your December holiday. You just absolutely, you know, you get your program together and you put in your contracts for your conservancy or for your area or for your organization. There is just, you know, when the contracts come out, the contracts come out. That's what the, basically the story is. Uh, and that's just a snapshot uh, that we had to uh, present to the Stellenbosch people. Uh, this was probably about 15 minutes before we told them that all their oaks were going to die of Shotol Borer. So it was a tough day. <clears throat> In terms of the herbicide assistance, we've got a bit of a problem on the herbicide assistance. It is on hold. Uh, budgetary restraints, um, you know, I can't tell you uh, in terms of nobody will tell you what in actual fact is happening with the money, but I think as logical people, um, we have gone through two years of COVID. The government's been against huge barricades with the COVID. Um, if you've got a, a, a health crisis, um, one must ask the question, to what extent is environment important when you actually are trying to uh, get the hospitals to be up and, and, and cracked. The, the issue is that we have the environmental um, money, that the, the money that goes to the environment um, has not happened. That money largely has not happened for 18 months now. And it's had huge repercussions on universities, on bursaries, uh, on contractors in particular areas. And as a result, not, not uh, only certain things have been able to ride over the money and get through this particular period. I'm sure that's off script as well. Um, but the budget restraints, that's the, that's, the, that's the coded message to say they have had problems and the money hasn't gone out. So there's certainly not the money that there was before. Uh, data collection challenges, they have all sorts of issues that they can do certain things but they can't do others. And then um, they, uh, working for water staff are, are certainly available uh, to give advice on the herbicide. Uh, we will get, uh, the next presentation is an issue on herbicide. Uh, there are certain herbicides you can use and there are certain herbicides you can't use. Uh, uh, and Debbie uh, Sharp, my colleague, is actually at a UN meeting for herbicides today, and uh, her two colleagues will, will tell you more about herbicide. Now, the future products. The bids closed in that famous period that I told you, January 2021. Um, in actual fact, I think they were supposed to close on the 12th, I know, because I was uh, also cancelled all my holidays and stayed at home and did them. Um, and then they extended it till the end of January. Uh, but the, the allocation of those contracts has not been 
uh, issued. In other words, and we're talking big money now. I mean, you can see that if Working for Water gets a, a budget from Parliament for 1.2 billion, there are an awful lot of people who've had to sort of basically realize that for 18 months they've got to put their, hold, their, their life on hold and um, you, 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 you just assume that the money must have gone into the pot to actually save us from COVID. That's the, the only um, uh, conclusion I come to and it's certainly are not based on any information that's come out of government. But uh, that, that is probably what's happening. Uh, the service provider contracts that have been going on have been extended to April uh, 2023. Uh, uh, they are contracts which are continuing through this period uh, because their contracts actually were started late or they uh, didn't start at the beginning of the three-year period. Um, they actually started late. Uh, this particular forum is a 2017 contract that I'm on. So I'm also uh, being contracted, but I'm being contracted from the, the previous era, uh, not the current era. And then uh, those are the guys that you really want to get hold of. Um, I will tell you what I know. Um, I think they work incredibly hard. I think they've got incredibly um, difficult uh, situations to, to uh, get across. I think uh, the training of contractors into a new system is going to be very difficult uh, for small guys. Um, but the money will start rolling again. It is not rolling at the moment, and I can't tell you when it is going to roll. Um, they hoped it would roll on the 1st of April, but we are actually, it's not going to roll on the 1st of April because there's, we've only signed um, contracts that basically say, please give a th three-month extension. So uh, universities for biocontrol, uh, universities for um, masters and PhDs, contractors working in particular areas, they have not been on the ground like they should have been in the last 18 months, but but uh, we've also been through one of the biggest crises of our life. So um, me and my friends, my friends and I around the room who can answer the questions about Working for Water can now answer your questions. Um, right, uh, you're not going to answer a question. You're, you're going to stand up and say something, I hope, Stian. About a few years ago, um, we spent more than six billion rand in an annual of three years of taxpayers' money of clearing invasive species around South Africa, not just Western Cape. So um, that is one of the reasons why we've established the biosecurity program, because it's not fair for government to spend taxpayers' money on private land. We do initial clearing, then two follow-up clearings, then we hand the, the land back to you as a landowner on a 5% density or less, or ankle height and lower. Now you're responsible for managing that land. So what happened was, a year later, we drive past the sea, but infestation again, right, Kay? So we decided, no, this can't be right. We can't pay all this money, give the land back. It's a waste of taxpayers' money. So we started by training our people as becoming EMIs. We also trained some of the working for water people to become a great level for EMI. Become four EMIs, that means we gave them the power to do inspections of land they've worked. If they find non-compliance, they tell me, and we make sure that landowners comply. Also, you will see that we cleaned the Berg River all the way from Fanzhouk down to Wellington Pass there. So what happened was, we get certain landowners in pockets down the river say, we will not comply. We don't want the help. We don't want to lose our screen of blue gums. We want this. So what we do is this, when working for water has passed, you don't want our help. Now it's your responsibility to maintain that property and make sure the river is clean. And as Lebo, they've issued directive on directive on directive on those property landowners. I've got a massive thing going on with the LDV now. I've landed with the working on fire helicopter on Valdivie, and we will enforce the law on them because they had the opportunity to, for us to help them. They decided not, and now we're enforcing the law because we're spending your money on private land, not state land, private land. Is that clear? Any questions on that? Anyone from Valdivie here? <laughs> As long as you didn't land on the polo field, Sian. I, I have a question about the Lisby River Yen Observatory in Cape Town. What if the NPO started a project without funding, with using homeless people, but as asking for donations of people? 
would uh, there be a possibility to for the state to provide something back to them? Thank you. Uh, can, can you maybe just give us a bit more detail with regards to the scope of that project? So it was uh, a, a privately funded? No, 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 there's no funding. No funding. You just asked for donations, but the scope of the project? The scope of the project to remove uh, aliens in the Lisbig River. Okay. That was the thing. But we're currently using uh, homeless people and using the donations from our homeowners in that area to pay for the shelter. So what is the criteria for that? To compensate the back them. It's not about gaining money but to gain those people's trust of not sleeping on the street and buying them soap or toothpaste or something. Thank you. That's a difficult one for me. Um, I'm not sure how to answer you on that. Um, okay, I don't know if you can answer this, but normally they, a contractor, um, you need to apply for funding and hopefully that contractor will have a team and normally when you apply for the assistance through working for water that 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 application stipulates on there the people you have to use from the community the people around there we also provide them with training on first aid how to use a chainsaw we, we not we will not take person people just out of a community and just give them a song to go we do give them training we do help them okay you must help me if i'm incorrect here but we right. do do that and if there is we need to use people from communities. So if they can register themselves as a service provider, obviously they can apply for that assistance or apply as a service provider to get funding. Oh, unfortunately, the process for this circle has closed. I know that. I was on a bit that, that, that has closed now. So it will be allocated hopefully in the next two or three months. I hope that answers the question. But it's a wonderful community initiative. And uh, I think that's, that's also important. The system is rigid. It's every three years, and it's that you get it in, and sorry for you. If you don't get it in those three years, you wait until the next three-year cycle. Um, okay, um, Sabella can answer also a little bit more on that, is it? All right. Um, um, good day, everybody. I'm Sabella from the Friends of the Elizabeth. Um, um, yeah, I'm quite intrigued uh, by the question that's been asked by the gentleman. Uh, basically, we're an NPO, um, a registered NPO. Um, we've I think for the past 21, way, 21 years, we've had a group of volunteers working on the Lisbic, and for the last or the decade or so, uh, we've had active people working on site, um, which um, I'm part of that team um, and managing that group of people. Um, it's just volunteers, um, not familiar that um, it's actually people from the street. Um, but I, I think the question that I was going to ask was, was uh, basically similar to, to what he was he's just expressed. Um, it's basically we don't have the capacity. I mean, um, we receive money um, of our donorships, um, and we're quite notorious for asking for help. Um, and it, it's quite great um, that um, 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 Stian mentioned that um, there is a way um, that we could actually um, um, look for help, uh, but I, th I think it's just for me sounding it out um, to everybody that's here that's working in the environment um, to actually um, also include us, um, the, the little guys, the small guys, um, excuse the pun, uh, the small guys on the ground um, um, to, to actually uh, be doing work. Um, I mean, we, we want to be capacitated. Um, in terms of training, in terms of funding um, uh, mostly, uh, because um, I think one of the biggest problems is that, um, I know Stian mentioned that, that, that this is very difficult um, when you have state-owned um, land that's, that is non-compliant, non and you have small guys like us who don't have law enforcement capacity um, to actually um, be helping out, because um, someone mentioned that we, we, we need to work together. Um, and we would like to, add, um, to receive um, that capacity um, as an EMI, um, maybe at a, a junior level, um, to actually help the, the big guys um, um, on top. Absolutely. Anybody from the city of Cape Town that can help here? What would the, besides phoning the local councillor, that sometimes works, believe it or not. I mean, for instance, I, I have a business right next to the Kaiser River, which gets cleaned on a regular basis, which we very, and that falls under parks and grounds, and I know they get contractors in for that. Anybody from the city would give us some guidance here, possibly? I think this is where we go back to the groups. You've got to find yourself groups. You've got to hang on to some group. And everybody has a different idea about how it all works. Um, uh, somebody is able to put the contract in. Somebody's able to, once the money is there, disperse it to small little groups. Um, and, and, and so it goes on like that. So it has to, you have to make groups. Um, can we get a microphone to Paul Barker? Where are microphone people? Oh, they. 
Uh, Paul, can you wait? Well, if you if you don't go on the microphone, you don't get into Facebook, and we've got all these people watching on Facebook. All right. Um, contacting your ward councillor is always a good approach, but uh, Alex Lansdowne, as a councillor, has now taken over a lot of the responsibilities of managing wetlands and waterways in the city. So that'll be, I think it's alexander.lansdowne at capetown.gov.za. And, and these are the people, I mean, these are uh, one group of, and he might be able to say, okay, go and link up with this person and that person. Uh, but you've seen the sort of organizations that do it here. The city of Cape Town are six foot underwater, just trying to make sure that all their materials in so that they can keep the house crows going, the mallards going, the, the waterways cleaned, and they have their own you know, funding operations. So for small people like this, they've got to link in with groups, uh, whereby a retired person from a conservancy, friends of the Les Bec, somebody like that, can actually work the documentation. The documentation uh, would be very difficult for a homeless person to fill in, I can assure you of that. Jolly difficult for me, so goodness knows what would happen if you don't have a computer. Yeah, the whole thing is public-private partnerships. I think, yeah. uh, you know, the, the days of relying upon a, a, a local government or provincial or national government to do things, they're really constrained. So civic-minded civic, civic -minded groups like the Friends groups in particular, mm. with or without uh, agreements with the city, have the ability to look after their resources and, in many ways, um, work together with the city to achieve those goals. So. Thank you very much for that insight. And what we found with these forum meetings is that these are places where people can connect. Uh, I remember in Stellenbosch we had quite a few conservancies which were all focused on exactly the same goal and they didn't even know of each other's existence. And suddenly in a room like this you start meeting people and say, but how, how can we work together from people doing mountain bike routes all the way through to doing uh, casual weekend hacking. So very important to be able to network and let's hope that we can, we can uh, bring some answers out of this. Um, question from the lady at the back. There we go, right there. Um, hi, um, I'm Liz Spark from one of those casual hacking groups, um, Rhodes Mem Hack Group. Um, I wondered what, where sandparks came into this picture of uh, working for water and, and I haven't heard sandparks mentioned much in today's forum. Uh, Sandparks apply for money at a DFFE at a different level because they're a sort of a, like a, it's the same as the city of Cape Town wasn't on that list. They also have, have elevated themselves to serious implementing agents. Uh, Sandparks gets, I think, three years ago, I believe they were getting 185 million. Um, and they, that, a lot of that money goes into protected areas. And I can tell you that the historical money went in. Protected areas were the first group of people that got the money. So protected areas, Kruger National Park, all these big parks are, are seriously funded. And they call them social biodiversity projects. They have team members within sand parks that actually look after them. Uh, we do have uh, rangers here from sand parks, but I'm not too sure about how, whether the sand parks people themselves are here. Um, and and uh, sand parks will be looked after. I'm absolutely sure of that. They get their own operations in. Um, but social biodiversity projects, anyone here from is social biodiversity projects, no, at Sand Parks? So your question was, do they get money? Yes, they do. They probably get about 200 million. Uh, where does it go on Table Mountain? I'm afraid that's probably another day. We don't have them lined up. This is biosecurity uh, compliance. And you've got to find them as well. That's the next trick. But we do know from first-hand experience, they have their own set of challenges when dealing with invasive species in, for instance, the Kruger. It's very difficult to go in and start clearing areas where you've got a couple of elephants and lions and things oh. walking around. It's a whole different management situation. Llewellyn Foxcroft is very good at sand parks. He's the head of the scientific services for Kruger National Park, and he's very good. I do know that in 2017, uh, DFFE put 50 rangers, uh, not crew and surveyors, but the equivalent in rangers, on Table Mountain, in Table Mountain National Park, to assist on the security uh, issues. And uh, I'm not entirely sure... Uh, can anyone tell me whether those 50 rangers are still there or not there? Um, but that's an issue to be talked about. Okay. Yeah. Well, there we go. They're still around. There we go. So that would have been a contract that's still running. Question? Comment? No? There we go. Sorry. Sorry. Just if you'd go back to your map, okay? Um, uh, if you scroll back to your map, or have you changed it already? But, but basically, on the map, you will see the service providers and then all the sand parks property that are owned in the Western Cape or managed in the Western Cape under sand parks. And that, that, that it, from what I understand of that presentation, is they, those are indicated as service providers. 
So the Sand Parks gets an allocation, and because Sand Parks is effectively a, a, an enterprise under the Department of Forestry, Fisheries, and the Environment, their money goes through a separate. Um, so if you look at the, the the pink, or no, the beige, the darker beige on the peninsula, that is all um, Sand Parks managed properties, and they will get a budget allocation. Um, and uh, Karen Engelbrecht um, is doing a lot of that uh, administration of the funding um, in, in, in Sand Park. So all the clearing in Takai um, and, and, and clearing in, in the Heart Bay region is, is done under her direction.